Hmm. Hello, hello. There we go. Hi, those watching the replay. Welcome to this video. And I am doing this originally live as a Facebook Live in my Facebook community for women over 40, women creating healthy lives. So if you are not a member of that community and you're on Facebook, come and join us. It is a free, there's about 3,000 women in there right now. And that is where I hang out most of the time, do my trainings, post recipe videos. Sometimes I post videos of me making my meals. I show you what I eat in a day. I also um, talk about the hormones like I am now. Um, and various things that you go through during this midlife phase and beyond, right? So really how it affects your body, mind, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And I also do programs and coaching for women going through this phase and beyond because you are different, things are changing, and what used to work does not work anymore. Even if you are through this phase, you finish menopause or you're menopausal, uh, if you have not made those changes, the specific changes I help women through, in midlife, then you probably are still dealing with a lot of weight gain, maybe some tired fatigue, feeling exhausted even, and going to, and having some of the symptoms, right? And unable to get rid of them and not knowing what's going on. So that is because you need to bring your body back into better balance. And there's ways you can do that that are not hard at all. And also understanding what to eat. And that's a huge thing because I can tell you pretty much 100% of the women I speak to when I speak to them one-on-one, -on -one, um, when they come to me, they believe they are eating the right things or eating healthy, but pretty much every single one of them is not eating enough of the right foods and eating um, mainly not enough of the right foods and not understanding that even some of the healthy foods are the ones that cause weight gain during this phase. Hello, welcome to this video. I'm just going to go on in my Facebook group and let them know I am live right now because they knew I was coming on at this time. So I'm just going to let people know. I don't want to lose my page. So this is a jam-packed video with lots of information because we are talking about the hormone. Hi, Benita. Talking about the hormone, insulin. Okay, and insulin you have probably heard of, especially when it comes to diabetes. But it is not only diabetics that have problems with insulin. It's a very, very common to have problems with this hormone when you're going through the midlife phase, which makes sense because all your other hormones are going crazy too, right? And insulin um, is affected by your sugar. And we're not just talking white sugar, not just sugar too. And that's the thing I think when people get, oh, I don't eat a lot of candy. I don't eat a lot of sugar. I don't eat pop, things like that. But you will find out some of the other foods that cause can cause this. Okay, let me see which one I'm going to use to say, I'm on live, come on. Hmm. Oh, well, let's just use this. fresh okay all right okay i'm gonna post it in my group so i'll probably get a couple of women coming on say hello if you're watching this whether it's the replay or you're watching live i love to know that you've watched say hello if you have any questions or comments feel free to comment feel free to ask a question i am here for you that is what i'm here for and of course you always can suggest video topics for me to do and if I can, I will. And if I'm not sure about something, maybe I'll refer you to someone or to a resource that can help you. Okay. So I am talking. Hi, Julia. I am referring to this book. It's backwards because of Facebook. The Hormone Reset Diet. Okay. Um, so I am reading from this book this week. Like last week, I did a video on estrogen. So the hormone estrogen and estrogen dominance and how... We talked about the connection to meat and how that affects your weight and how you cannot lose weight and what other things happen if you happen to be estrogen dominance and what to look for and what that means. Estrogen dominance is really something to learn about. If you are in that midlife phase I highly and you have weight gain you can't lose, highly suggest some of you watch that last video. I think it was on Friday. So, hey Lisa, how you doing? Good to have you here. All right, today we're talking about the hormone insulin. And yes, that has to do with sugar. 
um, but you'll also see how it has to do with many other things. Now, there is also something called insulin resistance. I'm getting hot already. Insulin resistance. So you might know of insulin, talk about, well, I'm not diabetic. Why do I have to worry about insulin? I don't understand the connection. It does. I don't eat a lot of sugar. I don't eat a lot of candies. I don't have pop. But the thing is, I've been using purple cabbage. I'm going to be using beets soon. Um, I'm doing some cooking, you know, getting my stuff done. Um, insulin resistance. You will not lose weight and you will continue to gain weight if you are in insulin resistance. What is it? That's what we're going to talk about. Okay, so there's something called insulin resistance and it does, you don't, do not have to be a diabetic. You do not even have to be consuming a lot of candy or sugars. It, you can become insulin resistant by also some of these things. Simple carbohydrates, okay? Things like rice cakes, crackers, um, those 100 calorie snacks that are shown or advertised as like healthier alternatives. Here's a healthier snack. These are under so many calories. Really watch out for those things. Breads, muffins, scones, of course, right? Even gluten-free breads, even sprouted breads, which aren't as bad. I have to say they're not as bad. But sprouted grain breads, sprouted breads, breads still have gluten, you guys. And I really encourage you to stay away from gluten. Um, although the sprouted breads aren't the worst, but they're still going to cause weight gain. Okay, so just note that any type of breads, even the gluten-free during this phase of life will cause weight gain. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. So sugar, insulin. Okay, let's, I'm going to start reading from the book here a bit. Okay, sugar. We know it's bad for our teeth. You know, it makes us tired because we get the crash. It affects your moods. Um, it's as addictive as cocaine. Okay, sugar is highly, highly addictive. Really hard to get away from. Um, it also feeds bacteria in your gut that make you hang on to fat. So this is something not many people know, right? Is it feeds certain bacteria in your gut that actually cause you to hang on to fat. So sugar, that's sugar, right? Sugar is the main reason you cannot fit into certain clothes. It is, and it, like I said, it's the way your body is processing certain foods, especially in midlife, okay? So there's such a thing as insulin resistance and a lot of women, if you have a bigger gut, you notice that, um, that maybe your gut's even bigger than your hips, and it kind of, it's fatty and is it's a lot of soft fat in your gut, you probably are insulin resistant, insulin resistant. When you are in that, it keeps you in a hormone loop, right? A loop of continuing that resistance and it affects other hormones as well. You will not lose the weight. You will not lose the weight. You can't lose the weight. Your body will not release the weight. It'll keep producing fat if you are in insulin resistant, okay? I'm going to give you some questions soon. You can tap into that. Um, insulin controls whether a calorie goes to fat or not. That's how serious this is. A calorie of carbohydrate is more fattening than a calorie of protein and fat. Even though a calorie of protein and fat has more calories, sugar and the carbohydrate, the simple carbohydrate, and that includes white breads, even brown breads, whole wheat breads, any type of that, any type of that, any type of crackers, any type of tortilla chips, any type, I'm looking at, thinking of some other things, any type of crackers, anything you even think, oh, I can eat a rice cake, okay? Eat rice cake with always with some fat on it because if you eat it on its own, it's going right to fat. I don't care how many calories it is. I don't care if it's two calories. Those calories are going to fat, okay? Um, too many of the wrong carbs cause insulin resistance. Too many of the wrong carbs that are the simple carbohydrates. We're not talking about broccoli. We're not talking about green beans. We're not talking about green peas. We are talking about rice cakes, cookies, crackers, breads, muffins, um, tortilla chips, chips, all of those things. Not really chips or high fat, but okay. Your body runs on glucose and insulin is one of the master switches. When serving you properly, insulin takes the glucose, when it's working properly, from the cupcake or whatever and stores it in the cells of the liver as glycogen and the storage form of glucose that can be broken down rapidly when you need fuel. So of course we know that like athletes and stuff, they eat pasta to carb up so that they can run fast the next day. So they have that continuous energy. So when you're in your 20s, 30s, and even early 40s, you can get away with eating some of those things and it's actually stored for fuel. 
that is used as fuel. So if you go to the gym and you like have some good carbohydrate lunch and you go to the gym and you work out, you're burning off those carbohydrates right away. But when you're in midlife and your body processes carbohydrates differently, we're talking about those types of carbohydrates, not broccoli, um, not vegetables, <laughs> right? This is what they're talking about. When you eat a cupcake or two every day or a piece of bread or crackers or rice cakes without anything on them every day or those simple carbohydrate snacks, um, you build up too much, okay? So there's not enough room left in the tank to store the glucose as glycogen. Then insulin turns devious, transforming from a fat burning hormone into a fat storage hormone, okay? So once the glycogen storage tank is full, so day in and day out, you are stuck converting carbohydrates. Remember, we're not talking about broccoli. We're talking about the starch carbohydrates, those ones, into fat instead of using them for fuel, okay? Which again, you guys, you think about it, if, you're, if they're not converting to fuel, you probably are going to feel more tired. You're not going to have the energy in your body. You're not going to have the get up and go. Your muscles are going to feel like, I just can't do it. And they have no energy today because it's not being stored and being converted to energy to, to move the muscles and to make you feel good and to go to the gym and do a whole bunch of lunges and stuff. You're not going to have that, right? It's going to fat. It's not even being used as fuel. So all of a sudden you have no fuel. That's why women find themselves in a frustrating cycle of being 10 to 40 pounds overweight, lacking in energy, unable to zip up that dress, right? Having that, that um, fat belly. Okay, so this is just some of the questions. We're gonna, I'm going to give you, it has an assessment you can do. I'm just going to give you a few questions and you can think to yourself, oh, is that a yes or a no for me? Do you crave sweet foods? Do sweet foods calm you down? Have you tried stop eating sweets but found you couldn't? It is difficult to stop eating carbohydrate rich foods such as chocolate, ice cream, or French fries, potatoes, rice, beans, muffins, breads, right? When you go without eating for more than three hours, do you feel shaky, anxious, or irritable, or lightheaded? That's this addiction to carbohydrates. That could be insulin resistance. For women, is your waist measurement 35 inches or greater? At the belly button? Do you have a body mass index over 25? Have you been told that, oh no, we won't go through that one. Do you have a hard time losing weight? Do you gain weight easily? When you skip a meal, do you feel, feel fatigue or cranky? Now, I'm just asking some other questions that you guys, we don't want to go to. Um, Okay, so some of those things. Now, what a huge indicator um, that you have like that addiction to carbohydrates and that your body's converting them to sugar real fast is, and this happened to me because I was eating so many rice because I, was, uh, I wasn't eating meats. I still don't. But so I was eating so much rice when I began to go through my midlife phase. I was eating rice and I was eating potatoes and I was eating lentils and I was eating beans and I was eating crackers and I was eating rice cakes. So much simple carbohydrates, right? And if I hadn't had them in a few hours or eating, I got lightheaded and I felt kind of shaky. And I'm like, oh my God, my blood sugar levels, which they really have dropped. And I need something sweet. I need something carby. And when you eat that carby thing again, then you feel normal again, right? It's because your body was basically going in withdrawals, but also your, um, it's like that blood sugar level drop, your insulin levels drop. And you need that fix again. You need that sugary fix, that white bread fix, that muffin fix, that bread. You crave them. Your body will go, I need it because it's your drug. So whatever your drug is, whether it's sugar, candies, chocolate, alcohol, um, bread, crackers, cookies, muffins, things like that. All of a sudden, when you start to feel shaky and, and you're, you notice I haven't had some in a while, your body will be like, you crave that. I need it. I need it now. I don't care. I just need it now. Right? That is the addiction. And that is what's going on in your body. So that's how you know your body is not processing that food properly. Right? Okay. Let's just look a little bit more in here. Mm -hmm. Insulin is the gatekeeper of many other hormones of your metabolism. So one hormone affects the other, affects the other, affects the other. And here's the thing, right? So you can say, well, I don't eat a lot. Like I'm probably okay. 
or I'm not going to deal with giving up sugar right now because I can't. But understand that it's affecting other areas of your life too. And another thing you're going to realize is high insulin leads to estrogen dominance. And estrogen dominance is what we talked about in my last video with the meat, with the estrogen. Watch that. It's very, it's not a good thing. High cases of breast cancer and cancer when you're estrogen dominant. Uh, fibroids, big boobs, big belly, unable to lose the weight. Okay. And estrogen dominance can cause a lot of health problems, you guys. So high insulin levels lead to estrogen dominance also. So even if you don't eat meat, you're not eating meat, and you're thinking, well, I'm not eating meat, so I shouldn't have any problem with estrogen dominance. I'm not having plastic water bottles. Um, yeah, I'm not eating preservatives or toxins, so I should be fine. I shouldn't get estrogen dominance. Too much sugar, too much of those white carbohydrates and simple carbohydrates, insulin resistance can lead to estrogen dominance, okay? It also raises testosterone too high, which makes you weight loss resistance, resistant, okay? Higher levels of testosterone makes it harder for you to lose weight. Um, additionally, insulin is a cousin to leptin, and you're going to hear about leptin in another video this week. That's another hormone. It's called leptin, L-E-P-T-I-N. Uh, the hormone made in your fat cells that tells your body I'm full. Okay, I'm full. So leptin is a hormone that notifies you, oh, I've eaten enough, I feel good, I'm full, I'm done. If you have leptin resistance, you will not feel full. You will just want to eat and eat meat. You'll be like, you'll eat a whole bunch and then all of a sudden you can go, I can eat again. I'm hungry again. Hi, hi Diane. Say hello you guys for watching who's on. Let me know who's here and if you have any questions, if you have any comments, say hello and post them below. I'm here for you. I'm just reading from this book, The Hormone Reset Diet. And we're talking about various hormones that play a huge part in your body and your health and in your emotions, in your energy levels, in your weight, of course, right? So today we're talking about insulin. So it was just referring to leptin because remember, each hormone affects the other. So insulin can affect leptin. Leptin can affect insulin levels. Leptin sig signals your body that you are full. So if you have problems with leptin, you're going to just continually eat too much. Okay. Eventually leading to leptin resistance, which means you don't get a signal to stop eating. Okay. So da, 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 just talking about what they're doing. So what she says, um, so of course, when we're talking about carbohydrates, right? That's again, it's like you can eat a lot of vegetables, vegetables and greens. And that's what she said. You decrease the sugars, you decrease the simple carbohydrates, you decrease the starchy carbohydrates, and you bring in way more vegetables and greens. All my programs, all of them have that as the base also. So no. It is easy to get rid of these things. It really is. It's easy to bring your, I mean, it takes time, but you can, and it's not hard to bring your body back into better balance. It's just, you got to know what are some of the things that I need to do and what hormones are out and how do I know? And you can, yeah, one affects the other, affects the other. So it's just this hormone loop you get into. Okay. So again, she says, slow burning carbs that come from plants, man, if I could say it to everybody, you need to eat way more vegetables and greens, okay? And some of those super powders. High insulin levels make your ovaries secrete more testosterone. Your cells also produce more bad estrogens and you become leptin resistant. Not good, is it? Okay, what else does it say? Sugar addiction, right? When you keep eating sugar, you develop problems with dopamine, dopamine communication. They need more and more sugary foods to raise their dopamine and feel normal, okay? And they experience withdrawal symptoms when you remove sugar. Many people know that if you've tried to remove sugar, you can get severe headaches, you can get shaky, you can get fatigue, low blood pressure, feel like you're gonna faint, and also feel like you're going crazy and anxious and you need that sugar. It's like, that's a drug, like I said, as addictive as cocaine. Women are twice as likely to be addicted as food to food as men. Okay. Interestingly, women with the greatest hormonal upheaval at perimenopause report the highest rate of food addiction. 
because it has to do with your hormones. Okay, so your hormones are out of sync. Do, do, do. Okay. When your cells become resistant to insulin, your body is programmed to raise your insulin levels higher and higher. This is troubling because these hormones regulate your metabolism. And the higher and higher the hormones do not lead to a faster metabolism, they actually lead to a slower one. Chronically elevated hormone levels signal that your feedback loops have gone rogue. Hormones are elevated, your metabolism gets slower, and you get fatter and fatter, okay? The insidious hormone resistance and biological feedback loop is the root cause of most women's continued weight gain, belly fat, wrinkles, exhaustion, autoimmune disorders, inflammation, sugar cravings, and chronic illness. So this is how important it is to better balance your body. I cannot stress it enough. That's why I like put out my programs because I just know how important this stuff is. And I'm just like, come on, you guys, there are ways you can better balance your body because if you don't, it will not get better on its own. And it could lead, like we said, high cases of, breast, of cancer and breast cancer, high cases of autoimmune diseases, over obesity, overweight, feeling tired, feeling exhausted, feeling brain fog, you know, hard, hard to remember things, feeling out of it. Oh, and here's another thing. So the tendency to raise insulin levels excessively and slow down metabolism comes from your ancestors, feast or famine livelihoods. When they had to be able to store excess energy at a time of feasting in order to survive a time of famine, right? So we're talking a long, long, long time ago. We didn't have food available to us all the time. So this biological, what's happening biologically in the body was needed to be able to store the fat calories because there were times when there was fasting, there was not enough food to go around, right? Put another way, I can produce insulin resistance in my own body simply by feeling overstressed. And what else do women deal with more now than ever? Stress. Stress leads to also high cortisol level. Stress leads to high insulin levels, right? This is how important handling your stress is, decreasing your stress. The only way to reserve, reverse this resistance and reprogram your hormone levels is to repair and grow no new hormone receptors. Oh, and so here's, she's a doctor. She's an MD. She's an um, obstetrician. Is that what they call them? Anyways, OBYGN, whatever. <laughs> she, so this is what she says. And you guys, I also dated a doctor. And this is what he told me about hormones and nutrition. They don't learn hormones and nutrition, regular doctors. She said, in most medical schools, they teach very little nutrition, about 30 minutes in her medical training of nutrition. They don't even learn about hormones, basically. So when you go to your doctor and you talk to a regular doctor about your hormones or about nutrition or about what you should do about this and that, they don't have the training. They don't know what to tell you. And because they don't know what to tell you, they're only, they're only allowed to tell you what they're taught, which is go on these specific drugs, okay? And of course, she goes into big pharma, right? That's We, we don't hear about how to re, re, reverse this insulin resistance and all of this stuff is because it doesn't benefit big pharma. You make no money off of people eating really healthy food and not getting sick, right? Okay, food increases blood sugar, insulin lowers it by escort, escorting glucose like a bodyguard into three different places in your body. Insulin is a regulatory hormone made in the pancreas that causes cells to absorb glucose from the blood. I probably don't need to know that. When you eat too much sugar, your pancreas slows down and eventually insulin becomes the overwhelmed bodyguard. Here's what wears out the bodyguard. Eating too much sugar causes wild fluctuations. 
both too high and too low in blood sugar levels, up and down, right? And insulin can't keep up. As a result, your pancreas keeps making more and more insulin. Insulin levels rise chronically high, which is called insulin resistance. Blood sugar then stays high because very little glucose is escorted to the liver and the muscles. That means you're not getting it to used as fuel, right? So you don't have that energetic body that you used to have. Um, and most is deposited as fat. In fact, your fat tissue can expand up to four times its size to accommodate the excess glucose. And in midweight, your fats in midlife, <laughs> your fat cells expand, they get bigger. They get bigger. So not only do you get more fat, your fat cells themselves actually get bigger. Okay. So you can eat foods that stabilize your blood glucose level. All my programs, I show you what food cells are. Okay. And you begin to eat that way. Okay. Clean protein, slow burning carbs, which we're talking about the broccoli, the cauliflower, the cabbages, the bok choy, the fresh greens, right? This and the yams, yams are good. This will lower your insulin levels into the target zone. Exercise so that your liver and skeletal muscles can store more glucose as glycogen and use it as fuel. But of course, in midlife, what I talked about before, there are different ways to exercise that are actually going to promote weight loss. Some ways of exercising in midlife, if you do it in midlife, will actually cause fat storage and you won't lose the weight. So you also, not only do you need to change what you eat in this midlife phase, you need to change how you exercise most likely, okay? Take supplements, that's what she says, that can help to sensitize your cells to insulin again and rehab the bodyguard, okay? So also it is, you know, minerals, 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 good amino acids, good fatty acids, all of those things. So it's the good nutrients, vitamins, the antioxidants, the minerals, good fats, really good fats, tons of fiber, but fiber from good foods, okay? Okay, I'm just seeing what else we have. She repeats a lot, so that's why I'm looking... Um, and again, she says she puts sugar in the same categories that did drugs, drugs as crack, cocaine, and heroin. Sugar is that addicting. The resetting of your insulin is the single most important action you can take to lose excess fat. Stress. Remember, I said stress can contribute to insulin resistance too. Are you in a high stress state? Are you eating too many simple carbohydrates, sugars, alcohol is sugar too, <clears throat> okay? Um, breads, muffins, crackers, rice cakes, gluten-free stuff even. Um, 100 calorie snacks, <coughs> yogurts with sugar in them and food coloring in them. Okay. Sweet potatoes and yams are different. Yes for yams, those orange ones. No for sweet potatoes, okay? She says eat one pound of veggies. Yep, so it's all about eating cooked and raw veggies, as many as you can, and in their raw or cooked state. If you have a thyroid problem, it's better to eat more slightly cooked, okay? Mm -hmm. You want to eat high-fiber foods, nutrient-dense foods, which are all in my programs. Okay, and another thing I want to talk about, oh my God, because she says eat, you know, every, um, what is she, every four to six hours. So what I find out from so many women when I talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, which I'm shocked at because I've never been like that, they don't eat a lot during the day. You grab your coffee first thing in the morning, you get to work, whatever, whatever, you get busy. People are like, I forget to eat. I didn't bring a lunch. I may grab like a few cut, a few crackers, maybe a few pieces of apple maybe some grapes, um, a few nuts, you're usually roasted and salted, right? Um, and then I get home and then I got to rush around, do this, help the kids do this, whatever. Then I don't eat till about eight o'clock and then I'm starving. Okay, right there. Fat, 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 fat. <laughs> you're not going to lose fat if that's your day. You will, you are going to keep gaining fat if that's your day. For one, you're super stressed. You are not even closely feeding or fueling your body at all, zero, zero, zero. You're not hydrating properly. 
You do not get, you're actually so, you'd pro, you're probably so mineral deficient that your hormones are crying out. Okay, you're, you will stay out of balance if that's your day. You will not come back into better balance. And unfortunately, when you don't come back into better balance, your body is in dis-ease, which leads to disease, you guys. This is how serious it is. If you are not eating properly throughout the day and drinking properly as in enough liquids, the right kind of liquids, I don't even care if you exercise right now. It has nothing to do with exercise. You need to get the food part right. And you cannot keep saying, I'm too busy. I don't have enough time. I never pre prep. I should prep, but I just don't because I don't have enough time. Then I'm just grabbing things to go. And then I don't know what to eat. And then, okay, all of those keep you in a pretty bad state, right? Feeling fatigued, feeling tired, feeling exhausted, in adrenal fatigue, your body's starting to break, or break down, right? Here again, eat the highest quality, most nutrient dense food. <laughs> okay. And of course, she's always says like, I eat as much organic as I can. And I go to the farmer's market all, all summer. Eat probiotic foods too. Are you taking probiotics? Are you taking digestive enzymes? Because if your gut isn't working properly, the food you eat isn't being absorbed properly. And there's things like kimchi, sauerkraut, get the good stuff. Um, yeah, good herbs, like natural herbs and stuff too. Cilantro helps to um, detox you from heavy metals. Oh, basil and cilantro and parsley and all of those are so good. And in the summertime, we have those. So make sure you're adding those to your um, salads. Okay. Oh, she says to help address sugar cravings with a combination of L-tyrosine and 5-HTP. 5-HTP you can buy easily, L-tyrosine you can buy also. So if you're somebody who's really suffering from sugar cravings, try a combination of those. But what's also really needed is to, oh, someone's on, is to, you got to get rid of the sugar, okay? Got to get rid of the sugar. You will not get out of insulin resistance if you're still consuming the sugar. You're just going to be in that hormone loop and you're not going to get out, right? Okay. And so the stress, she's talking about stress, exercise, and what you eat. And so if you, have, if you guys are more interested, I'm, uh, I'm going to do a program coming up where we're going to take you through the hormone reset. It's not hard. It's not hard. And you get to eat tons of good food. And I give you all the recipes. It's just that you need to give up certain foods on certain days. Okay. That's what it is. Like sugar. Uh, one is coffee. One is meat, which meat is so easy for everybody. It's not hard at all. You can give up meat for three days. That's no problem at all. Alcohol is another thing because it is the sugar and alcohol uh, really just makes everything worse. <laughs> so if you are in a state of any of these hormonal problems, alcohol will actually exasperate it. Okay. Make it worse. All right. Do you guys have any questions? Thank you for being here. Do you have any questions? So this is how serious it is when I talk about bringing your body back into better balance, body, mind, and spirit. Um, because the stress, how we think about ourselves, how we think about our life, how we um, deal with issues that happen to us, how we deal with outside stressors, right? Um, the energy we allow into our body from other people, from toxic people, from toxic energy, from TV shows, from news, the mainstream media, all of that adds stress disrupts our nervous system st adds stress to our body our energy our energetic body too and that throws us right off right um so when you go to think about okay i don't like the fat i have on my body i really want to lose this fat it really does need to be body mind spirit and that's why i work on all three of those in my programs and we do talk about you know the sugar right and my all my recipes do not have meat. You can eat like uh, wild meat, grass fed, all of that. If you catch your own fish, whatever. Um, but I give you the recipes so that if you want to try like, oh, these are really cool recipes because I want to cut back on my meat. Not that you have to, right? But I really want you to understand that um, conventional meat is where so much of this problem comes from, right? Oh, those things. Let me just see if I can find that again. Where 
Look at that. 5 HTP. So 5 dash HTP. L dash tyrosine. T Y R O S I N E. One hour before breakfast and lunch. 500 to 1,000 milligrams of L tyrosine and 50 to 100 milligrams of 5-HTP. And you can watch this video back too and you can <laughs> take notes. <laughs> you can take notes. Okay. So if you haven't watched the video from the beginning, for sure go back to the beginning. Oh my God, it is packed full of information, okay? I, I'm reading from this book, Dr. Sarah Gottfried, The Hormone Reset Diet. I know it's backwards, but that's what I'm reading from. And each day I'm going to, um, throughout the week, I'm going to talk about various hormones that affect your weight, that affect your stress levels, that affect your wellness, all of that, okay? Out of this book and give you some suggestions of things to do. It's also to really raise and see how, you will see how each hormone really affects the others. And so by just focusing on one thing in your life is not quite enough. That's why truly, again, it's body, mind, spirit, okay? And what a perfect time to really, midlife is the time when we are meant to come back to us, to really focus on our health, because our body is crying out, talking to us in so many ways, I am at dis-ease. I am imbalanced. I need help, right? And so therefore, it is time for us to begin to listen to our body and take action and do the things that we are required to do to keep it healthy. Oh, for sure, Diane. It's really getting awareness of how bad it is and why, right? How do you want to live your life, right? How do you want to feel, right? What do you want to be like? And knowing, and instead of burying our heads in the sand and saying, well, it's just, I can have, oh, it's just, I feel fine. I'm fine. I feel fine. You may feel fine now, but the inside of your body is not fine if you are overeating certain things or you have weight that doesn't go away and keeps getting worse. That is a sign that something's off, okay? That you're ignoring part of yourself. If you're completely fatigued all the time, if you're completely anxious all the time, if you're depressed, if you're not feeling right, if you're all of that, those are signs, okay? Your body speaks to you in symptoms. <clears throat> and uh, it, th that's not something to worry too much about. Tea versus coffee. Basically, how much are you having of each? Um, so just like if you have a little bit of honey, okay? If you have a little bit of honey in your tea, but you're basically someone who doesn't eat a lot of sugar or candies or anything, that's okay. But if you also consume a lot of other sweet things throughout the day, then that's going to lead, that's going to be a problem because it just compounds, right? So Anna, if you get up and you have one cup of coffee or one cup of tea in a day, that's not going to be, that's not a bad thing. You need to focus more on your vegetables and your greens and minerals and supplements and all that, right? And getting rest and decreasing your stress and really listening to your body. That's what's extremely, extremely important. Now, if you have five cups of tea a day with cream and sugar, that is not good. <laughs> but that's common sense. You probably know that. And I think most people know what they're doing wrong. You may not be want to face it and you may not be ready to face it, right? But you know. If someone put a gun to your head and said, what foods do you know you should be eating every day to be healthy? You would know, right? You would know what those are. So saying we don't know is quite a sugar at three or four. But it depends on how much, Diane. Do you have sugar in the rest of the day? Do you go home and have sugar at night? Do you drink alcohol? Do you consume breads, bagels, things like that, right? So at three or four, if you've eaten healthy all day and you've had two green smoothies a day and you're doing really well and you have a little piece of chocolate at three, that's totally fine, okay? So it makes a huge difference, right? That's why I'm not all or nothing. I don't tell someone, this is what, everybody do the same thing because I don't know where everybody is. In my programs, with your information, I help guide you what might be best for you. Yeah, and how much do you eat at three or four? Do you, How much sugar do you have? What kind of sugar do you have? What do you eat? What are you having at three or four and how much? That's really important. If you have weight gain, do you have a big belly? Do you want to lose weight? 
right? Like right now, I don't need to lose weight. So I can have a little bit of chocolate. I am definitely not an insulin resistance. I can tell you that much. <laughs> I have no insulin resistance, right? Um, so if there's a person who's like, no, I'm, you know, I'm pretty kind of fit. I don't have a weight problem. I don't tend to put on weight anymore. I'm doing really well. I eat super healthy. Then I'm going to say, it's okay to have a little bit of chocolate. It's okay to have dessert every once in a while. Yeah. So it's about, yeah, how you are, what the rest of your body is like, how much you eat during the day, what you are eating during the day. So if somebody is just eating things like toast, breads, um, peanut butter, um, grapes, grapes are stony grapes, <laughs> the pure sugar, they'll go right to fat. Um, you know, you think you're kind of eating okay, like energy bars, but you're not eating very much vegetables and greens, then you're not eating good, right? Oh, I eat chicken and then I have an energy bar and then I have uh, a rice cake with peanut butter, all of those things. It's like, that's not even food. That's not even nutrient. Five to seven pounds is pretty good, Diane. Yeah, you're doing pretty good. What do you eat at three or four? Is it just a bit of chocolate? But also what I suggest for you to have then, Diane, make sure you're having two green smoothies a day and have your green second green smoothie at three or four in the afternoon. And if you still like a little bit of sweetness with your green smoothie, have a bit of apple cut up really thin or something with cinnamon or some almond butter on it. On it, Because if you have a bit of almond butter on your apple, it doesn't spike your insulin levels, okay? And, or some almonds with, like raw almonds with some, a piece of apple. If somebody likes sweet, that's why I got away from eating so much chocolate. I actually, because I used to eat so much chocolate in perimenopause. Oh my God. And of course, I ended up in adrenal fatigue. I ended up like severely exhausted, tired, bonked. My body broke down. Um, so how I got away with that was when I wanted chocolate really bad, I had a little bit of dark chocolate. And then I had it also with some apple and with some almond butter or apples and, and um, a bit of celery and uh almonds raw almonds yeah green smoothie i make a batch you can make a big batch in the morning put half of it away right so you have one batch of your green smoothie in the morning have your second batch at the afternoon and it keeps in the fridge i don't like it the next day but it's okay in the afternoon yeah and if it's just really dark good dark chocolate then it's not the worst thing either if you only have five to seven pounds to lose, you're probably not insulin resistance. But still, it's a good idea not to get carried away with sugar. You don't want to rely on it for energy. You want to make sure you're getting the nutrients that help feed and fuel your body. So that's why you have the energy. It's because your body is healthy. All right. Such great information. Watch from the very beginning if you missed this. I will be to our next hormone we're going to be talking about is I'm going in order in this book leptin the next hormone we're talking about is leptin l-e-p-t-i-n and it has to do with fruit leptin is your hormone that tells your body you are full so if anybody out here says I can eat and eat and eat and I just don't seem to ever be full or full enough or yeah I eat and then I'm hungry so soon after leptin could be your problem and that is the next video. Maybe tomorrow night. I will let you guys know on the Facebook group when I will be doing that. All right. Have an amazing night. Amazing night. Remember, I work like this in all of my programs. You need help with this. Come to me. I have many ways to work one-on-one -on -one with you. All prices. And I'm also going to do a 21-day program that will help you go through this. And that will be coming out in September. Okay? Much love to you guys. Have an amazing night and go eat something healthy. <laughs>